We don't know what we're doing. <laughs> we don't know what we're doing. You're the one steering the ship here. That's right. No, we, that out. You're the we do. I am. I am. I know what we're doing, but we don't know what we're doing. That's exactly, That's exactly why this is so good. good. Yes. I love this. So, uh, hello out there in the world. My name is Preston Smiles, and I help people get free from the inside out, regardless of their external circumstances. And today, I have with me two extremely magical beings, two people who both in their own rights have giant uh, wakes. Everywhere they go, they explode the room with energy. And what's crazier is that they found each other, which makes the room even explosive. Um, because oftentimes, it can be challenging for two very dominant powerhouses to be in the same space. But these two people are like twins. I have twins, and it feels like I'm sitting next to twins right now. Yes. True. Yes. We're, we're half the eight. I'm yeah. half her eight. Yes. So, so I'm sitting with Deborah Silverman, the world famous international astrologer, and Blue of Earth, uh, the number one podcaster, the funniest person on the planet, the wordsmith. Exactly. All the things. Uh, she owns the internet, and it's all happening here in my home, in our Alexi and I's movie room. Hello and welcome. Thank you so much for this having us. This is your us. microphone, Deborah. That's right. Hold Thank it. you so much for having us in your living room. <laughs> what an intro. I feel so seen. This is such a great... This is know, a, lovely a to be on the receiving feeling. end of it. Mm -hmm. Deborah, I we want to talk at the same time. His, speak quiet over there. I kept hearing you say to your kids, I see you. That sentence made my heart sing. Because mm. you see people. Because yeah. you just saw us. Because you can't tell we're twins. I mean, we have a similar something or other. I mean, I thought we looked identical. <laughs> <laughs> like you, me, babe, now I'm worried go. about you. Okay, you take it over. So, uh, I want to start with... Um, <laughs> very silly. <laughs> These are silly people. But I know what you meant. Okay, so if this is going to be my podcast, then it's going to be crazy. So we're going to start with okay. um, something that both of you may not answer. And it's okay if you don't, okay? Um... Since every podcast you go on, people usually ask the same questions. I'm not going to do that. I'm just pre-warning you right now, okay? Okay, so we're going to start right in the deep end. And I'm going to ask both of you how it is to date and have a sex life, whether you have one or not, when you're this powerful. Because I can only imagine in this time. There you go. You had a little dagger right there. Let's go. Get some. Go. Oh, me, right. Thank you. So good. Ooh, yeah, you went straight into the deep end, which I deeply respect Four and appreciate. I have four planets in Scorpio. She's my astrologer. I'm learning astrology. I understand. I'm intense and I'm deep, but I also like to keep it light and playful and silly. So I feel that I have a strong magnetism, so I can magnetize what it is that I would like to dance with in this life. Mm -hmm. However, simultaneously, what I crave is to be met in the depth. Mm. And that is the rare part. Mm. So I, would, I, I love being alone so much, and I have sourced everything that I would like to create for myself through myself, that I'm no longer outsourcing it, that somebody else is supposed to have that piece that I'm then calling in. So for me, because I love being alone so much that if it's not adding value, mm. but subtracting, then it's no. Mm. So mm. it's actually fair and few. Well, okay, well, hold on. What do you use as the metric for whether something's adding value or not, given that sometimes somebody could be such a challenger that the value is being added by way of them just standing in their own thing, uh -huh. right? So how do you, what's your metric for deciding what value in, isn't value? The word challenge. Ah. I want to be sparred with. I'm only going to sharpen my tools because of the sparring. Mm. And so when I'm the one educating usually or, mm. or challenging or inspiring or uplifting and similar with Deborah. Being somebody that's a teacher to, to many and having infrastructures where we sit in a position of, of leadership, but leadership from behind the throne, which mm -hmm. is encouraging people to step into their empowerment. Yes. When somebody can meet me in the depth and then challenge me there, mm -hmm. oh, 
I live for that shit. Yeah, opened you right oh, up. Oh, I'm like, yes, I'm meeting different parts of myself. I'm transforming in your presence. I'm loving who I'm becoming. I feel like I've been able to access a part of my psyche that I haven't had access to before without your reflection. Mm. That sweet spot of growth. And now when somebody has dared to go to the, the extremities of their own consciousness mm. and meet themselves on their own, then for somebody to stretch that muscle even further, mm -hmm. that's the sweet spot for me. Okay, hold on. Because I'm about to, I'm coming for you yeah, in a I second. Love, I love You're this. You're like on the end. Okay. I'm listening. I'm interested. <laughs> me, okay. okay, so I have two questions. And one's observation, the other's a question, right? And as you know, I'm a very intense person just like you. So if I'm going to do this, it's going to be real, right? So my observation is that you have a type. Mm -hmm. Okay, can we just start with that? Do you see where I'm going with this? Yes, I love the face she just made. Okay, so I'm not even going to say anything else other than that. And then my second question is, would, would you date a regular guy? Like a dude who's like an accountant who like plays basketball and like, but he's like deep inside of himself, but he's regular. Mm. Well, regular is subjective to whatever meaning you place on it. Um, for me, it's a combination of chemistry, which you cannot fake. Um, that is either there or it's not, and you can feel it. It's felt before a single word is even spoken. For me, I'm instantly tuned into it. Um, it doesn't matter what it is that they choose to do. It's about whether they're willing to ask themselves the deepest questions and be willing enough to take radical ownership of their experience while being curious enough in the mystery mm. that I like to dance with. And so how they choose to express themselves, if they're passionate about accounting mm. and they have a really deep side that wants to meet me and spar with me in those realms, then get it, like go for it. It's not about what it is that they choose to place their mastery. It's about the passion behind their mastery and it's about their curiosity and their relationship with the mystery. Yes. That's what I find to be attractive. Okay, I'm coming back one more time. <laughs> what came up for you when I said you have a type? I distilled it down to a level of mastery in some degree of area, of, of whether it's in music or whether it's basketball or sports, mm -hmm. I have found that there is a theme mm -hmm. and the type being that they have mastered their craft. Got it. Okay. I hear that. Mm -hmm. What about physically? <laughs> For some reason, I've, I've had multiple relationships that are Middle Eastern men. Exactly. <laughs> and I'm right. like, I don't know. I, I don't know. I, it, but it was only two. Yes. And then the third guy was not Middle Eastern. Okay. But he was also a master of his craft in his right. own unique lane. Um, so I thought I had a type. They All the names started with A. So there was something. My mum made a joke around that. She's like, hey, well, I just like, A, A, A. Like, what's you got going on? I don't know if it's because I, is there something in my chart that says I'm attracted know, to men with the name of A? This is all mysterious. Uh, yeah, it's very mysterious. But here we are, dancing in the mystery together. <laughs> Um, really so maybe I'm moving through the alphabet. If there's any B men out there, like, <laughs> you, like, what's up? Yo, I, I'm over here. I'm single. I'm ready to mingle. I'm here on my heart. Like, let's go. Um, I don't know. <laughs> it's probably the best answer. I was honest. Okay. I'm letting you have the hook for right now. I still got ammunition. I got more to come. <laughs> Deborah, can you tell us about your dating and sex life? Not like fully, but like, does it exist? If it does... Tell us about it. <laughs> <laughs> this is such an interesting video. I mean, that was so interesting to me. I find this conversation peculiar. Okay. Because karma and kismet and the decision of how two people get brought together mm -hmm. is so far. I always say Cupid has no eyesight. She just like hits you and you fall in love. And she doesn't know astrology. She's never interested in whether the charts work. <laughs> so I find this whole conversation, I can't explain. I've known love this life. Yeah. And I've really had my share of delicious, sensual experiences with this body of mine. Yes. And then there's dry spells yes. where I'm mystified and I'm like, Am I shut down? Am I open? There's moments when you have to reach inside yourself and really have a love affair with yourself. Yes. And then there's moments where you're like, do you love me? Do I what? Do you love me? So I'm, I can't use logic in this conversation. I, I do know my capacity for love. Mm -hmm. I do know my fascination. I, like I, what you said the other day, you love love. Mm -hmm. I'm addicted to it. I, am def I see love, I see couples, and I stare. Mm -hmm. I watch you and your wife, and I'm like, look, they are doing that relationship thing. Mm -hmm. And I can't explain why in this life, 
As my son once said in an astrology class I was teaching, and he said, Mom, why don't you just admit you have bad karma in relationship? I was like, shut up. <laughs> what kid says that to his mom? But I kind of mean that I had to learn this lifetime about being alone and being with the other and mm -hmm. dancing in and out of relationships. So he kind of, it's not bad karma, mm -hmm. but I have had karma in relationship. Okay. How many of you can relate to that? Exactly. All right, I got, I got one for you, <laughs> and I want you to answer the same thing. Um, can you talk to us, and there's like three questions inside of this, but I want the story first. Can you take me back to the last time that somebody melted your heart, mm. where you were just straight putty? And I want like the details, like the moment. He looked at me, we were here, and I just was like, take me, like that moment, right? And I'm not talking about sex, but just like your heart was like, I can't resist this beating. Mm. Mm. So I, this is probably everyone has one of these stories the very first time. Mm -hmm. I was young. I was at Harvard. I met a professor. I was too young to know the difference. And he said he was in an open marriage. This is like way before that word was polyamorous. We didn't mm. have the word at the time. Mm -hmm. And he was a super intellectual, six foot four, lived in Alaska, skied to work, super duper Leo, Pluto on his son. If he only... And I said to him, I was so young, and I said, he fell in love with me. And, he, and I said, wait, hold on a minute. I'm too young to know what that word means, but I think I'm feeling it. And then after he left, I realized I couldn't sleep. I couldn't eat. I had every single symptom. And then it continued for years to come, that continued, that romantic. And I thought to myself now as an adult, that sensation of where you, <laughs> you lose your breath and your tummy goes all funny and you look into that person's eyes and what do you see? The best part of yourself. Yeah. Like he brought out of me mm -hmm. the part of me that was so innocent and mm -hmm. so truly student. Mm -hmm. a, like how in a good relationship, what you talked about, the sparring, we would spend hours and hours and it was an experience in this lifetime that I still reflect on to remind myself of the innocence of sweet young love mm -hmm. when there is no resistance and there's no awareness and you're so naive and you're so open to fresh love. It's like when that baby arrives mm -hmm. and you look in the baby's eye, <gasps> you're so in love with that baby. Mm -hmm. When you, Anyone that has a parent knows that feeling of like, why am I so, I don't even know you and I'm in love. I'm going to put you on my boob here in a minute. You're going to live with me <laughs> and I don't even know who you are, but I'm in love with that baby. That I don't say, even that, know who you are. I, mean, how did that, I remember so distinctly when that baby came home and I was like, oh my God, I love this person. Yes. That innocence has left me far distant. So I have mm. to just confess mm. that that very, it's like the first time you ever anything, the first time you make love, the first time you ever good making love, mm -hmm. the first time you have a kiss, the first time you do drugs, the first time you, it's like, like oh! and some part of me as an elder feels a little sad that I can't bring that freshness back. Mm. And at the same time, I do see it when the sun rises. I do see it when mm. the colors of the leaves change. I do see it when the, the wind, when the full moon, and I'm, I'm like, Just rising. that's so crazy. Mm -hmm. So I keep myself as a spiritual practice of never forgetting it, but truthfully, I kind of forgot it. Mm. Thanks for asking. Mm. Mm. Beautiful. Yes, no, I'm coming, I'm coming. So, same question to you, but it's twofold, because I want to know who's the best A. <laughs> oh, you're putting her on the spot, you little fireman. You don't have to say it. No, you can't say it. No. You, can't, you can't say their name. You just have to describe a thing that if any of the A's were listening, they'd be like, That was me. Was that me? Yeah, like, you know. So bad. So, so good he's bad. Start with the A's and then if it's something else that has the what I asked about melting your heart, then yeah. tell us that one too. Okay. Oh. So it goes completely against my nature to choose anyone because my empathy and also my deep appreciation for the uniqueness mm -hmm. of them is very real. And so I would say that a quality that just really stood out to me in one of the three A's, to be really vague. Um, Go um, safety. 
Mm. Like consistent mm. safety. Mm -hmm. Because within this the 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 depth of the roots and this and the and, and because the roots run so deep when the wind blows going nowhere, that tree is not going anywhere. It may sway a little bit, but it's not going anywhere. Mm -hmm. My creative, fiery, expressive, deep, shamanic, emotional, playful spirit can be free. Mm -hmm. And so in the alchemical process of the deep roots of the safety, that's where I've met the extremities of my creative expression. Right. And so that's been one of the greatest gifts of one of the three A's. Mm. Um, actually, two of the three A's. What, what, what did the A... The one, I know there's two, but like the one that really hit this, nailed it out of the park. Give me an example or a moment where you knew or felt that safety. Like how did it happen? Because there are men listening and there are women listening right now who are going to say, well, how the, how the fuck do I do it? Like, mm -hmm. what does that look like? Mm -hmm. Right? Safety is super fucking broad. Mm -hmm. So what did Amir do? <laughs> I'm just like. I'm joking. Uh, <laughs> what did one of the A's do that was on her face? This is unbelievable. Yeah. Is it? Are we going to put this on camera for we, real? We are. I we, mean, this is my nature. Yes. I mean, are you a sad drawer? We're, so, We're so similar. Let's We're go. game on. So what did one of the A's do? I know I was just joking with that one, but it may have been him, but maybe not. <laughs> but what specifically registered as safety to your nervous system? No matter what it is that came up for me, whatever the process was, whatever the emotion was, whatever it was rooted in, whatever story I was telling myself that was creating more division, was met with an unwavering response of love. Sure. That there wasn't a contraction, that there wasn't a projection, that there wasn't a reaction. It was just a pure witnessing that if we were looking at it from like an energetic standpoint, it goes, yeah, it's, it's. So, So he was just like a better person than you. <laughs> so much better than me I sucked, they rocked I'm the problem, they're the solution <laughs> It's okay, it's okay I'm crazy No, but seriously, that is epic And that's every woman's dream Correct, and I can tell you right now I don't do that I'm like, 8 out of 10 I can get there, but there's going to be 2 Where I'm like, are you fucking serious right now? Like, um, And even if I don't say it My energy would be like, oh I'm gonna lose it too and I love you yeah, yeah, yeah. what do you want to tell me <laughs> tell me everything that I did wrong yeah. here. like that's awesome that's yeah. an epic person a very epic person and why did you break up with <laughs> her <sighs> that's a harder question this is amazing I thought you were a Scorpio and you were self-conscious about sharing the deepest but it, yeah I'm but I've got Leo Yes. I'm going to go Sag. home now and have a vulnerability hangover, but yes. this is afterwards. This right. is okay, afterwards. Good. Okay, go. Yeah, 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 yeah. Go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's go. Let's go. Um, because it was a combination of the perfect storm of it being COVID, lockdown, mm -hmm. um, him being extremely consistent mm -hmm. and me being extremely unpredictable and creative mm -hmm. and feeling like a caged animal and creating this experience of being bored because I was still in the archetype of the maiden, not the mother, which mm. the maiden thinks that the grass is greener on the other side, yes. where the mother nourishes the roots that are right below her. Mm. And so the perfect combination of storm was a projection that mm -hmm. it was actually him that was creating this, yes. which actually it was deeply rooted within myself, but I had to learn that the stove was hot by touching it. And so it was a necessary lesson that has been integrated in me so that I can be a better lover, mother, friend, sister, teacher, student, all of the things. And they call that Saturn return. And yeah, it's uh, what they call that Saturn return. Yeah, and I was just coming out of uh, yeah, coming out of my Saturn. Saturn I was in my Saturn return as well. Yeah. So I also do live from the ethos that what is meant for me, there's nothing I can do to fuck it up, yeah. and what is not meant for me, there's nothing I can do to make it happen. While yeah. simultaneously integrating the necessary lessons, and the one consistent thing that when the dust settles or the snow globe has been has settled is how epic that human is yes. and will always be. Correct. Okay, watch this. So let's say he walks through that door right now and says, I want your heart back. What's your answer? <gasps> We've been talking about this. <clears throat> I've learned that patience is the greatest way to create genuine solid foundation. Mm -hmm. And so I would be entertaining the opportunity to dance again. Okay. So... Andre, if you're listening, just make sure you're... Oh, <laughs> Terrible. Set up?
<laughs> I am terrible, dumb. <laughs> wow, we got a lot of fire right here. Yeah. <laughs> wow, he's a Maui. I'm impressed. Okay. Law of realness. You do realness. The law of realness. I mean, yes. Right yes. I like this it. is, you know, we're like this, though. This is how we actually are. So, um, you. <laughs> Talk to me about what doesn't feel good about being as successful as you are. Where did he get these questions? He's going to get right I literally that. just it's, opened. It it's, has been very hard in my lifetime because as I get older, you would think, in normal standards, that people get tired mm -hmm. or that there's a reclining or there's a reduction of what the effort is to put out. Mm -hmm. But it's quite the opposite for me. The older I get, the more excited I get. And my energy just keeps increasing, which is a little bit peculiar considering I'm sitting with these young people. And so it's a little tricky because I see it the physiological. I can explain it astrologically mm -hmm. that I have a grand trying and fire, so I have a natural capacity, mm -hmm. and fire needs to spend energy to make energy. Mm -hmm. Other people get tired, and they have to lie down. We have to go exercise to get our energy back. Mm -hmm. Like, as soon as we spend energy, mm -hmm. we come back to life. Mm -hmm. So I'm peculiar, and it's not natural at this age. So what that's done is created a separation of some sort, and I think people project onto me that I have an ego, which has been always offensive to me. Like, oh, you're so ambitious, and you have such a need for attention, and look at your success. Mm -hmm. It was like, wait, I honestly can't stop this thing. It is. I may look like it's my ego, but actually, it's me taking breaths. Mm. Like I can't not not wake up and go. I'm so excited. I'm so excited. So I've had to reduce my judgment of my own ego and not take the projection on mm. and be able to stay steady inside myself and say, you know what? I know what's true about my motivation. I can see where it could be misinterpreted. Mm -hmm. And I would really say to myself, to your point, I come back to myself and I go, you're doing fine, Deb. You know, I know my, in my heart of hearts mm -hmm. that I am so motivated by turning people on like a radio. Mm -hmm. It's like the biggest rush. I finish working and I'm like, I helped a whole bunch of people today. That felt so good. It's not because, yes, there's side effects to that. You get money, you get applause, you get noticed. We're walking down the street today and someone goes, hi, Deborah Silverman. And there's a part of me, your little ego, that goes, that's kind of cute. But more, as I get older, it's a feeling of, I'm doing what I came to do mm -hmm. and I'm checking off that list with delight. So I take away that projection that's been put on me mm -hmm. and I put it back in with, this is just cause to heal. This is just <clears throat> cause to have compassion. I understand why they see that in me. It's not true. Mm. Wow. Powerful answer. Thank you for sharing that. Mm -hmm. um, it took a long time to get there. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we see it. We can um, just a moment to acknowledge uh, all the work that you've done to get to the place where you can be ageless. Right? Because in some ways, yeah, like I can go, oh, this is a person who's older than me. But in other ways, I'm like, no, she's not. No, she's not. This is a silly ass person who's like sort of just ageless. And I'm just really proud of both of you for finding each other, for doing your own separate work to be in a place where you can align and geek out and just have another being to play with, you know? It's a big deal that you two found each Wait, other. Ask us what happened when we had that, uh, that recognition, or ask me. Yes. Yeah. What happened when you, we were when it... We a podcast together, and by the time it was over, I, felt, I honestly felt this, like last night. There's certain chemistry that happens with people. Mm -hmm. That is a truth. And there's an astrological explanation if we wanted to go there. Mm -hmm. I remember finishing that podcast and thinking... I just realized that all the hard labor that I've done through this lifetime of being able to go up against all the collective beliefs, the femininity, the ability for success, the ability to be loud and wild, the ability to say the weirdest thing, I just saw, oh, so she's standing on my shoulders. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden my life had a whole different meaning and I was like, okay, you go, you go baby. Cause mm -hmm. I could, and it was such a mm -hmm. meaningful relief that happened for me. And I imagined other elders looking at people coming into their footsteps and saying, wow, that made my life feel like it had a reason. Yes. Mm -hmm. So it really, it changed me that day. I, it, and you're right, mm -hmm. ever since then, 
And we just did this magical formula where she produced, she introduced me to her audience, mm -hmm. and all these people are taking astrology classes because she just did a little cute little thing, mm -hmm. and all these people's lives have changed. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like that's the nature of the result mm -hmm. of, yes. of being able to feel the continuation mm -hmm. of a soul like yourself that says, I will not mm -hmm. do what I came in to do. I will change all the lineage that our families handed to us and go on and make a whole new story. And please feel free. You guys can do the same thing. Real talk. Mm -hmm. Thank you thank both. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your yeah. deep questions and how you snuck in on our psyches. Mm. <laughs> yes, this was fun. This was juicy. Um, I appreciate both of you. Uh, if you're not following these two humans, you get to. They're pretty epic, pretty interesting, pretty crazy. Um, and as you know, birds of a feather flock together. So if this touched you in any single way, uh, ask two things. One, to implement something. Two, to leave a comment below. And then three, to go ahead and follow both of them. Love you. Appreciate you. See you soon.